Okay, beautiful women. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, for being on time. I love, I love when we can connect live, which is often. Um, but I feel, I always feel better after these calls than when I got to the calls, like just more connected, more in my heart, uh, more of a sense of community. So thank you for being here, for being part of my community. Um, we're going to go ahead and just take a moment to light a candle. If you happen to have a candle, great. Otherwise, you can just take a moment to close your eyes. We're going to start off with a little meditation here just to switch gears because, you know, whether you were on the screen before this or whatever the earlier part of your day was like, just want to just give us all a moment to really drop in and actually be here with each other. And almost as if you could just allow your heart to reach out to the other hearts of the women in this virtual circle today. Yeah, just taking a couple of deep breaths to change your physiology and to allow your body to start to produce more chemicals of relaxation. So we can actually receive the wisdom uh, that Audra will be giving to us today. Just taking a couple of deep breaths on your own. And you can just stay in your meditation while I just read this lovely little um, passage. From, this is from the Mother Mary Oracle uh, by Alana Fairchild. And this is Our Lady of Creative Choice. You have, in, you have my power within you, meaning creative force, creative choice. And you are free beyond wildest imagination. Do you know that you are a slave to no thing and no one? You are a divine being. With the power of creative choice, you can create worlds, my beloved. Even the smallest choice creates, contains great creative power. Do not cast your power aside. My child, choose to trust me to live with an open, vulnerable heart. Choose wisely, creatively, and well. You do not fear your power for the best choice you can make is to learn from all your experiences. I will guide you to use your power to create healing difference in your life right now. You have at your disposal the power of heaven and I will guide you to use it well. So this is Our Lady of Creative Choice. I don't have the actual oracle card, but I have the little picture there. So pretty, it's by Shiloh Sophia. So pretty. Starting out with a little bit of beauty here. So a couple of announcements before we, we dive in. We're here to talk about today um, creating and filling your visionary events. I think I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. We're getting a little background noise. And I'll unmute Audra. Awesome. Um, so I'll introduce Audra in just a moment. Um, I wanted to let you know that our next training call like this one is I'm going to go ahead and type this in the chat box for you is um, uh, with Heather Sontag who's here with us today and um, it's called digital systems to stop overwhelm and attract so really cleaning up like the systems that you use um, like digitally everything from email to actually putting systems in place so that you're not bogged down by all the to-do items um, that are required by your computer. Break free of the jail of your computer. <laughs> um, so that's Wednesday, March 4th, 14th at 9 a.m. So that's our next training call. The next announcement that I have to make is that the our annual goddess retreat, goddess revival, is just around the corner. It's next month. And um, those of you that are part of the speaker, speaker mastermind ladies, you get to attend that weekend for free, even if you're not presenting at it. But I do need everyone to RSVP because that gives me a correct headcount beyond the ticket sales. Um, and then there's a couple of you on here who are part of the uh, Femme VIP um, 
<laughs> Amanda said, Camisalabia. Oh, my hair, my hair, my hair is Amazalabia. Yes, Amazaball's hair. I've got my YouTube hair on. Um, and uh, those of you that are part of the Femme VIP membership get 50% tickets. So if you're a speaker, you get to come for free. If you're part of the VIP community um, with the monthly membership, uh, you get to come for 50% discount. So make sure you RSVP. <sighs> Let's dive in. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Audra Grady to the call. She, she stepped up to lead. She, uh, she and I were in a conversation and uh, we're talking about how there just really is a desire for people to really understand how to not only create their events, but fill their events. And Audra, well, she'll introduce herself more extensively, but she has a lot of experience uh, in running really successful events for herself, for other people. Um, and she supports visionary leaders to create conscious, sustainable businesses through the art of gathering people and accelerating information. Um, she also um, has a course called Get Clients, Get Paid, The Art of Relationship Marketing. Uh, and her revolutionary collective of visionary leaders, the Vibrant Visionary Collective, can be found at audragrady.com. So I'll go ahead and just post her URL, and you can take a look at that. Um, so we're here today to talk about creating and filling your visual, your visionary events. And so uh, we don't necessarily need to put our hands together, but we can definitely just blow Audra a big, beautiful kiss mwah, and welcome her. Audra, you're going to be kind of connecting with us for, uh, you know, 20 minutes or so. Uh, you're welcome to go a little longer. And then we're going to open up for Q&A so you'll actually be able to ask your questions of Audra. So please write questions down as they come so that you can be concise when it's time to ask and here we go. Welcome, Audra. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Can everybody hear me okay? Good. All right. So thank you so much. I'm really excited to be with this particular group of amazing women. Um, one, because I've seen several of you speak on the Fem Talk stage. Um, so I know that you're already well accomplished and successful in a lot of the ways that you want to be in your business um, and that you're doing good work in the world, um, that you have a clear message. Um, and I know that if you're part of this community, if you don't have those things, you're working on them and you will have them in, in a short amount of time, especially with Jessica's leadership and modeling. Um, and Femtox is a great example, actually, that I use when I'm speaking to people um, about how to create a um, event-based business, right? So when we talk about visionary events, it's not just create one event, fill it. It's create a business that is a sacred container for gathering people and accelerating transformation. Right. So one of the things I want to say before I kind of dive in is that a lot of event production um, is really common sense stuff. But where we can get tripped up is that it's a lot of common sense details all put together in the right timing structure and order for someone to be able to go through an experience and um, really touch in to a deeper part of themselves through your guidance and facilitation. Um, so I'm looking forward to the, the conversation that we have after I share a little bit with you. Um, because of your level of business and depth of knowledge, um, I'm, I'm, I'm positive that we'll be able to talk a little bit more about the refining piece, right? Rather than the, I'm having my first event, I've never spoken before. That's a very different place in business, right? And so I want to dig in with you to those points of um, departure, right? Like we're always in uh, a death and rebirth in our lives in many, many different ways. And as event leaders, as visionary leaders, as speakers, um, there's always that point of departure where something is leaving, something we need to let go of and we're stepping into something new. And that's where I would love to focus today with all of you is What's the next thing that you're birthing into as an event leader? So um, I'm going to touch on a couple different topics. I'll give you a little bit more background about me and um, then we'll dive into that refining conversation. Like how can it all just get better and better and better? So 
One is part of my background is um, 15 years in higher education. I am a, currently a doctoral student and working on my PhD in psychology at the California Institute of Integral Studies. There's a couple alum here on the call, so happy to see you, Amanda and Laura. And I'm actually writing about visionary women entrepreneurs and the new woman entrepreneur that's stepping more and more fully into their feminine spiritual nature and leading business from that place, right? And some of you on the call are doing that. Jessica, you're certainly doing that. Amanda's doing that. Laura's doing that. And, um, you know, part of what we're, we're birthing as a collective of women is a new consciousness in business, right? And a new way of being on the planet. And so we're doing our little thing over here, but we're participating in this energetic shift that's happening. And so as event leaders, we have a, not only a great opportunity to be a part of that turning, but we have a responsibility, right? When we gather people, it's a moment in time that will never happen again. Right? This group of people that comes together will never be the same people. They will never come together in the same way. They will never be in their, the same places in their lives. And so it is really a critical um, sort of cauldron or melting pot of all these amazing things that had to happen in the universe for this to come to be at this moment. Right? And so the, the psychology of transformation is really running in the background for me, both from my experience um, in my doctoral work and all the other education that came before that, um, but also in leading events for the past 20 years. So I have participated, led, facilitated, um, produced events, hundreds now in different capacities. Um, like many of you, I've gone to lots of different things and experienced them. But as I go in and experience, I'm looking through the lens of, okay, how are they producing this event, right? So there's the transformative aspect of it, the psychology of what's happening for your participants. But then there's the structure of it. How do we create the matrix of this particular event so that it can be the most compelling, have the most impact, and create the most opportunity for transformation, both for the people in the room, your participants, even your staff, your support, your volunteers, and for you as a leader, for your business in terms of revenue um, and leverage, right, and visibility. Um, and how can we structure the event so that we create this really beautiful um, arc, right? So the arc of transformation is created both by your content and leadership, but also the structure. And so one of the things I work on with my clients is called a peak experience. Um, some of you might have heard of this term in the world of psychology. And peak experiences happen in our life, right? They might happen um, when we experience the death of a loved one. We go through a major transition in our life. Um, we might have some kind of uh, mental shift or what even might be called a break or a psychosis, right? So if we look at the new consciousness of psychology, what people used to call psychosis, we could now look at as spiritual emergence, right? That this is an opportunity to step away from that death of something that was no longer us and step into the birth of something new. So that peak experience, we can sort of craft a space for it within our event, right? And so for some people that may even be some degree of spiritual emergence in their consciousness and their evolution and their life and their business. And so the structure of your event down to like, you know, little tiny things where the tissue boxes are in the room, right? Whether you have water, if it's cold or if it's hot, if you're providing tea, if you're having food, all these little tiny things, um, the things that are running in the background all contribute to that container or the setting, the environment we're creating for that person to emerge in a new way. And so um, event production is really crucial to the whole shebang, um, but it's also critical for you as the leader to have support in bringing this all to be, right? Um, and so what I do as a um, business owner myself is to step into partnership with people around their event production. And that can look a lot of different ways um, and it's customized to whomever I'm working with. But generally, we're in a really fluid relationship, 
And so I would encourage you, if you're thinking about doing larger events or multi-day events or long retreats, that you have a person that you can be in that kind of relationship with, that you feel completely supported by, that has your back, and that has all those details on a piece of paper that they're managing, that you don't have to touch, so that you can be shining in the wisdom you're bringing, in the transformation you're creating, right? If we think about, um, you know, an example might be when you're in a one-on-one -on -one experience with a client, right? If you had to be dealing with, you know, the doorbell and the phone calls and the delivery truck at the same time that you're trying to be fully present for this one person, it wouldn't work, right? So why do we think it can be different when we lead events? It can't. You cannot hold the container of transformation for 30 people and be managing the catering for lunch. That's not an effective way of being a leader at an event. And so if you don't already have your support team before you leverage into those larger events, you really have to craft that sort of womb that you can be in and lead people through this experience with you. So the other piece that I want to bring up that's, um, you know, what, it's not what we necessarily hear from people on stages about is that you don't have to choose this way of being in your business. It is a choice to be an event leader, especially a visionary event leader. And it isn't the way that everyone has to find success. So if we looked at um, what holographic success might be for each of you in your business, in your life, for some of you, it in would include events, right? And for some of you, it may not. And that's totally okay. Right. There's this um, sort of running idea in our, our broad industry of sort of coaching and transformative leadership um, that everybody's got to get to this place of leverage where we have events with hundreds of people and we make a million dollars. And that doesn't have to be the case. So I just want to put that out there and bring it into the conversation and welcome it, because um, for each of us, our path is going to be very different. Excuse me, I have a little tickle in my throat, so I might have to pause this in some moments. For each of us, our path will be different. And so we can take all of the, the wisdom of our elders of this community that have come before us, um, and we can take what works for us and then find our true alignment as visionary event leaders um, with what might look very different than some, somebody else has done before. Um, so that our fulfillment, especially as women leaders, is really looking at all of the different pieces and components of our lives in this particular time, this critical time on our planet, right? And I love that there's a little boy with flowers there. He was just so darling. <laughs> so it's, um, it's, you know, in all of our events, in our, all of our businesses, we're looking at um, not just our financial success, but our, our success in terms of social justice and advancing um, our collective community on the planet of human beings to be ever more present and conscious of the realities of life for everyone and that we can create a more equitable situation um, for all of our brothers and sisters and cousins and um, that we can step into spiritual fulfillment, right? And so that is a, a, a key component of when I work with my clients, you know, that's never left at the door. That's always a part of the conversation, right? We can no longer look at life in this sort of siloed perspective where one thing's here, another thing's here, and another thing's here. I mean, the reality is it's an interconnected web. It always has been. It always will be. It might look a little different. It might shimmer in the light differently. Um, but that doesn't get to leave. And so when you're on stage at a three-day event, for example, there can be this sort of um, amping up, right? Especially right before the offer, right after your offer, if you're inviting people into a next step. Um, I've seen it time and time again. People build up, they have their confidence, they feel strong, they feel centered, they make their invitation, and then there's this sort of deflated feeling afterward. And that's where we can lose connection to the divine, to our spiritual self, and to our place of feeling grounded. And that's when we can lose connection with our people. 
that are present. And that's where the gathering, right? We can start feeling like, oh, wow, we're just, we're on the way out. You know, we've only got half a day left. Everything's going good. And so we start to relax. And relaxing is great, but not if you get disconnected, right? So spirituality always has to be at the center of this, whatever you define that as. Um, and as you can guess, sustainability. So one of the things that um, is clear for me as an event leader um, and that I've practiced at smaller events and larger events is that I will always be um, next to, near, or completely immersed in wilderness at my particular events. And so I have declared in my life, I am not leading an event at a hotel conference room. That's not how I'm gonna do this, <laughs> right? And, and there's nothing wrong with that if that's for you. Um, but for me, there has to be connection to the earth. And the less distractions we can create so that there really is a pure connection, the better because sustainability is key for me and how I'm leading and how I want to um, encourage our conversations when we gather. And the fact that it's um, just, you know, it has to be a part of our conversation now. It has to be part of our transformation as a, a human collective. And so um, the peak experience that I created for my, uh, my retreat last year was a, a, a vision walk. It was sort of a, a vision quest light, which <laughs> I don't say those words lightly. Um, for people who have never experienced being in the wilderness, it was a first step, literally, um, or you know, first many steps of a journey that could could come for some people. And so um, I actually had you know participants who had never really gone for a hike before, right? Be out on the earth quietly. In, in just presence with them in the earth, no cell phones, right? Um, and they had never done that before. So this, this little moment of time that we can take to go be on the earth quietly by ourselves and to ask for support and guidance, right? Um, was a, a really monumentous experience for some of my participants. And personally, in my work, I am training to be a wilderness apprentice and guide for vision quests. And so that will actually be a much larger component of my future events and retreats. Um, and the vision I have is that um, as entrepreneurs and as visionary leaders, we will um, build into our lifestyle and our business style um, these moments of connection with the earth and with silent space to actually gain the understanding that we need to craft a better business, right? Um, and so that's, that's the peak experience that I bring into my events. And so some of you may already have peak experiences and some you may not. And so I would encourage you to think about what that might be for your people. Um, and something that really truly inspires you and motivates you to wanna to share this with your participants. There's also the idea that, um, you know, I mentioned this a little bit with the, it, it's a choice to create an event-based business, um, is that we don't all have to make a million dollars. And, you know, Lynn Twist, Soul of Money, the author of Soul of Money and one of the founders of Pachamama Alliance, she speaks to this in a really wonderful way, that we have this sort of... Um, kind of obsession with abundance right now, abundance this, abundance that. Um, and if we don't have a strong intention behind it, then what are we really creating abundance for, right? And so if we're just creating a bunch of money so we can go buy more stuff, what's the point of that? So what is sufficiency for you in your business? And what would sufficiency look like in creating and crafting an amazing visionary experience for your community? Um, I also want to mention that if you haven't led a lot of events, um, the first event might really feel like it sucks. <laughs> Even if you feel like you found some level of success, you're going to pick out all the things that went wrong, all the ways you didn't show up the way you wanted to. Um, and that might happen at the first six events, the first 10 events, right? So if you really feel called to lead people in this way, um, the refining process is, is where it's at, 
right? And so that first few, you know, slugs through like all the details, Jessica's shaking her head, she knows this intimately, right? Um, I wasn't there at the very beginning of Fem Talks, but I can imagine that it's just evolved over time, right? And it just becomes better and better and more beautiful, more refined, more intimate, more connected, and more aligned in lots of different ways. And so when we're creating community and we're creating events around that community, um, we need to really build in the time in our business for that process. Because something, when we create an event, a gathering, is happening that's beyond us, right? We might be the instigator of this particular gathering, um, but something else is happening, right? When all those people come together in that particular moment, in that particular way, something way bigger than us is going on. And so if we can really craft into our business model, our event-based business model, the time and space for that to become on its own, right? And come through us in a way. Um, that's, that's really where it's at. That's where the success is at over time. And so, you know, for myself, I was going to lead another retreat this year. And I, I actually pushed the pause button on that. And I had so many ideas about that because I was like, I'm an event leader. I produce events. I'm known for events. I would, I can't cancel my own event. Right. And I was like, you know, I really felt into it. And I'm like, 2018, is not the year for me to have a retreat because I need to go deeper into this wisdom, right? And, and do this doctorate, this thing that's gonna take so much time and then come back refreshed and birthed anew for that particular phase of my life and career. And so I really see that a longer, much more rich, much more in-depth and much more wilderness-based experience will happen for my community in 2019. And I'm giving it that much space, 18 months, right? Where I'm not doing what I thought I was gonna do. Um, and so you get into your own groove as you master this particular experience that you're creating for your people, this particular type of transformation. I also wanna say that like 20 to 30% conversion when we're talking about revenue um, is really good. You know, if you have 10 people at your event and you convert two and you walk away feeling sad, there are people that have, you know, no signups at their events, right? So it's not necessarily about the numbers. It is, but it isn't, right? Um, and so compare yourself to yourself. And if you get one person at this event that signs up for a deeper connection and experience with you, beautiful. Get two the next time, three the next time. Right. And of course, this depends on how many people are at your event, what type of experience you're creating um, and what your goal is for your for your event based business model. Um, but 50 percent conversion is is really a rare thing that that happens. Right. Um, so don't set yourself up for like this big lofty like, oh, I'm going to have this event next year. It's going to be 300 people. I've never done it before. And 150 people are going to sign up. Yes right? Like, get real about it. This is the hard, long game of business. It's not the short game, right? And the people who um, kind of created their events and had hundreds of people, there was a little bit of a beginning of that in our broad industry, right? Where people had a lot of success really quickly. And I just don't think it's the time for that in general. Not to say it won't happen for anybody, but I think it's, it's a um, we need to be really strategic about the business model we're creating when it comes to events because there's a lot more people out there that are, are sharing their gifts as coaches and holistic practitioners um, and the market is a little saturated. So just building that into your awareness and your strategy plan. Um, I think I'm going to leave it at that and open it for questions and dialogue. Let's see. I guess I'll, what I'll do is I'll I mean, first of all, I want to say, Audra, I really love your approach. It's easy to get on a call like this and be like, here's the five keys, which is, which is wonderful. But I think because there's also this Q&A that we get to weave into what we uniquely need, you know, that's less necessary. And I, I just really loved the um, visionary language that you use, the spiritually oriented language. It really resonated with 
the way that I curate and experience my events and um, what I strive for. Um, so there were certain things that you said that I, I typed into the chat box there. Uh, just, and I love that Khadija was like, you're preaching. <laughs> so thank you, thank you so much for just coming to this conversation in just such a uniquely feminine, rounded, centered way. I really appreciate that. Um, I went ahead and unmuted everyone. And of course you can always mute yourself if you've got a little bit of noise or whatever, but since there aren't that many of us today, um, I think what you can do is just unmute yourself and say, hi, I'm Jessica. And just go into your question. If two people happen to talk at once, we'll just, it's fine. We'll work it out. So, uh, yeah, I would love to open this up to Q&A with Audra. Hi, I'm Amanda. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> um, so I, I, I appreciate you kind of covering the wide arc of, of the event. Um, I, I really resonate with everything that you said. And um, I'm curious about your insights about actually getting the event full, any particular tips that way. Mm -hmm. Great. So I knew that would be in the questions. <laughs> it always is. Um, and, you know, the way that I described creating a transformative space in your event, that happens before, during, and after, right? So everything that I spoke about can be applied to engaging people in this gathering before they're present. Um, what I think people make a mistake around is that people are going to sign up and they're going to have their experience when they're with me in the space. And to some degree that's true, but if you think about the whole process from start to finish, right? Like if we look at um, the, I, I kind of, I describe it as the client life cycle within our business. If we look at the client life cycle within an event, there's a moment of conception for them where they're like, ooh, this is a good idea. Look at that event. It's kind of exciting. And some people are an immediate yes. Some people are like, maybe. Some people are a, if the date works. And then others, you know, trickle down. Um, so that we've got our really early adopters that are, are in right away. And then the rest of the folks come in at a, a certain pace. Mm -hmm. And generally, there's a big push for signups at a certain moment in time before your event. Um, and that depends on your audience, whether they're national or international, the size and scope of your event. Um, and so if you have a two hour workshop, you might get a push a week or two before where a large number of people commit. Um, but if you have a three day event, it might be two months before, six to eight weeks before where they're deciding, okay, yes, I'm in, I'm booking my travel, I'm doing this. Um, so in, in engaging people to come to our event and really filling it up, we have to be engaging them all along the way from the first moment that they meet us. And it might be, you know, three years somebody's been following you before they decide, okay, I'm in, and now's the time. So all of the tools that you're learning from the people around in the industry right now, everything that Jessica's teaching, all of these things are applied all the time in our business to engage people in the event. And then there's the particular um, invitation that we craft for them for this moment, this particular experience. And that always has to be refined as well. So um, the before event process has its own process of refinement, just as the after event process right? Because if we have this amazing experience for people and then we just drop them off and they never hear from us again and there's no kind of wrap up or closure um, or moment for them to step forward and something else, it can feel just as jarring, right? So it, it's really all about relationships. Um, and I think the way to really fill a larger event is through relationships with your partners in business um, and your, your sister business owners, right? And so you all have an amazing group to be doing this to maybe even create collaborative events, right? There's um, so many events out there now that we don't really need another like lone wolf going out and doing it on their own, right? We need the events where people are coming together collectively, collaboratively, and moving that dialogue forward 
for the collective. And so when you have 10 people, 20 people, three people, whatever it is that are leading and hosting this experience together, it might be a longer process to create that, but you have more of a reach. You have then more partners of circles around you to really be inviting people in. When it's just us in our business and we're trying to do all the marketing and put it on all the posts and get it all out there, it's just harder, right? Um, so what is the ecosystem around your business that can share that inv invitation to the event over and over? So that, that, that's the long game answer, right? The short game answer, do things that are engaging. If you're doing online marketing, be doing video instead of just posting. If you're, um, you know, having a Facebook event, make it exciting, right? Like where you're inviting people in, um, in a way that's dynamic. Maybe you're doing something that nobody's ever done before. Maybe you have some crazy idea in the shower and you're like, nah, I couldn't do that. Do it. Like we have to be different. We have to be our, our most expressed selves to draw people in and inspire them. And if you're not feeling that right now in your business, then maybe it's a pause moment. You know, we don't always have to be inviting people in. We should invite them when it's the best time for that to happen, for it to come together. And so with that being said, look at the cycles and seasons of your business, which Amanda, I'm imagining you do this already in your work. Um, but there's times to be quiet and there's times to be loud, right? And there's times to invite in and there's times to block out and go within and dark and quiet, right? And so, um, how can you apply that to inviting people in and engaging them before your event? Great. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to dovetail on that just to really ground in the, the long game piece that you spoke to about partnering up with other people in the community. It's something I'm always like trying to get you ladies to do. Because when Fem Talks really took off, it was when I said, oh, like you all are coming to speak on my stage, share it with your networks. Let's bring all of our networks together. And then Fem Talks really took off in a sustainable way. Um, and you all create such an such amazing, you all are doing such amazing work and there's such a wealth of uh, wisdom right here. Uh, I could totally see you all creating guest speaking spots for each other on your online webinars, your live events, etc. Amanda, you've been doing this um, with a couple of your projects and partially because then your community gets the wisdom that you can't give them, right? Like I'm not an expert around writing and publishing your book, but a lot of you want to know about that. And so it's like, well, let's bring Jill in and, you know, events, let's bring Audra in. So it's nourishing to your community, but then the other piece is that, okay, well then that guest speaker or that guest teacher is also going to be sharing that event or that webinar with their list. So you get an influx of people who never would have heard about you otherwise. So it's such a powerful, uh, I have collaborative conversations around exactly that, like several times a month like hey how can we play together how can we support each other how can we cross promote each other and i really want that for all of you so thank you audra for bringing that piece in because it's like that is the thing that will make your business go and the other piece for those of you that are already kind of playing at the six figure multiple six figure level you you cannot make the leap to uh you can lone wolf it to six figures. You can't sustain six figures as a lone wolf. Um, and to make it to multiple six figures or six multiple six figures to seven figures, like it's all about team building. Like that is the foundation of a seven figure business. So if you start engaging in it well, now and become really Jessica. comfortable with it and really facile, then the sky's the limit. Then there is no glass ceiling. Laura has a follow up question. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I love what you said about the cycles of your business, and I'm in one of the rest cycles. Mm -hmm. um, as I think you know, um, Audra and, and Jessica, definitely. And um, so, and, I, and the follow-up is on this piece of um, having guest speakers. 
Um, I am way long out for 2019. I, I have in the back of my mind that I'm already planning my next enrollment uh, retreats, which have been my sacred businesswoman retreats. And you saw an early version of that, Audra. You were at one before it became what it is now. Um, and I'm thinking of redoing it again completely to Sacred 2.0. And one of the things that I'm thinking of doing is opening up three speaker slots mm. in a three-day retreat. And um, previously, I've had one where an advanced client has been invited to uh, speak on the last day. And then we actually all give her feedback. Because one of the things that I've been doing is teaching public speaking and a, kind of like an outline or how to tell your story in a way that engages people or how to express, express what you do in a way that describes pain points and longing points. And then on the last day, they get to see a model of a client doing that as well as making an offer to them, either free or low priced. And now I'm thinking of shifting it up and having three of those. And they would be people who have been our graduates or have been advanced clients and kind of having them come in as um, models and maybe as partners where yes, they are ex ex asked and expected to promote kind of like, I know Jessica, you ask people to be partners when you do your retreats and help promote. Um, and also having them get commissions on anybody that they bring who then enrolls in our inner circle um, and maybe fill other roles. Some of them may want to be on the inspiration panel. Some of them, yeah, they may be bringing some people from their tribe. Um, and I have in the past had coaches there. And, you know, my retreats have been anywhere from 12, 18 women up to 50. I don't really like the 50 person size. I'm preferring the like 20, 25 size for a weekend. Um, but I'm wondering if you see any potential trouble spots. Mm. Have you heard of anything going wrong with speakers and different ways to do it? Like I know, mm -hmm. Jessica, this came up for you. Am I gonna have my speakers pay and get the, this amazing bonus mastermind, you know? And my clients are not used to paying or paying affiliate commissions. And I have had the speaker say, you know, you'll be paying 50% affiliate commissions if you get any sales. They've been surprised at that. I say, look, this is standard. We're mm. bringing you the, the audience. Um, and I want to back off of that, but then have them, I'm just wondering what my model is. And this year we experimented with our advanced clients getting tuition credit on our inner circle in exchange for doing some things that coaches had done in the past. And then um, I was paying less to the coaches and then the inner circle clients were getting this experience and um, a discount off their tuition, which they loved. But there've been just a few, let's just say, misunderstandings that came up in a couple places like, oh, I needed to be clearer about that. Or I needed to be, what if they cancel? And then they're gonna need to pay that remaining tuition or whatever, you know? And so have you seen any trouble spots with bringing in past clients as speakers? And what are different ways you would set that up? Mm, great question. Yeah, um, I definitely have seen trouble spots. And the biggest trouble spot is that it can affect your conversion of your own programs. And so um, I think the way to really look at this is one, it may not go the way you anticipate it to go if you make a change. And that's an okay thing. If you look at your business and your event in an ecosystem, when we change one part of the ecosystem, it affects the other, right? And so some of that we can account for and some of that dynamism of just being alive, right, <laughs> is things we can't expect. And so some of it we have to experiment with. Um, I think when you go from having one guest speaker to having three, the biggest trouble spot I see is now you have to shift the container or structure of your event because if you typically were inviting people in and there was one offer and then one sub offer in your event with your guest speaker, they have um, one big decision. Do I want to continue with Laura? And one little decision. Hey, this thing sounds great. Maybe I want to try it out, right? When you have three guest speakers, they now have four decisions to make. Mm -hmm especially if you're doing a longer term program and you're inviting them in and it's thousands of dollars, right? That's a big decision for them to already be making. 
if you're, you know, sort of collecting a group of speakers and they're all making $100, $100 offers, then, you know, people could sign up for five of those. But if they're coming in and deciding, do I want to do this $5,000, $10,000, $20,000 program, um, it can become a distraction to invite lots of other things that they have to think about, right? And so I've seen leaders that, you know, only have one speaker or have no speakers because of the fear of how that will impact their conversion. And I think that is a decision um, that needs to come from your heart of like, where is my business going in the future and what's the greater purpose, intention, mission here, right? And so if part of your mission is to create more collaborative, feminist-oriented uh, events and business model, then maybe you have to go through that period where some unexpected things might happen and you try and you try again and you, you work it out until it really is successful. Um, but if it's all about money and you're like, you know, and it's okay if it's all about money for depending on where you are at in your phase of business, right? To say, right now, I'm still getting this right. I'm still creating mastery. And so inviting three speakers is not what I'm going to do right now because it's going to distract from this process of becoming, right? And so I think in your particular phase of business, it could work at this time. And it's just how will it work? And how will it work really well for everyone? Right. Um, and to some degree, I think people are really appreciating the very honest conversations, especially at business oriented retreats of how does this work and how do we make it work? Right. And so there might be some conversations, say, with your inner circle um, where you ask them, you know, you've been to this event before. If there were three speakers making different offers and invitations, how do you think that would have affected your experience? Right. So going back to the people who know you and love you um, and really asking them what impact would this have on you? Because they're your best um, resource. Right. Um, and then for the you said, you know, you're engaging them and giving them a discount on their their tuition or their education credit. I think that's an awesome way to really keep your community going strong and take some of the pressure and weight off your shoulders and say, you know, here's a group that's leading you, right? And that's a, a wise thing to do when you're building a community because now it's not all on you and you're not just the guru leader and everybody has to do what I say. There's a community of leadership and we're doing this in a way um, that really appreciates where we're at in the present moment. And that might look different than it used to look. Does that, how does that feel? Yeah, I appreciate your clarity that it could affect conversions. And, um, you know, I'm not, I think that in order for me to have a satisfactory conversion where it's worth it for me to go through the energy of putting on the retreat, I would need to have like 50 people in the room every time. Right. And I don't kind of don't want that pressure on myself. Yeah. Every 12 people. I'll be able to enjoy it. And frankly, I think, so that's just a good reminder for me that stick with leaders and helping to teach one or two sections and getting a discount off their tuition, getting commissions for anyone they bring who um, for our program is a better way to go because I don't want the energetic pressure of having to have 50 oh. people in the room. Great. And, um, and the one other thing that you helped me get clear on is there's between a conference, which I have done, mm -hmm. Um, with you know that. <laughs> I've put on large conferences twice. They're a ton of work and I've had a lot of teachers and it's been offering. Yeah. Uh, that, and it's my mission is just to get divine feminine yoga out and bring all these divine feminine yoga leaders. That's one way to do it. But if my mission is to, I think it's relaxing for me to serve a small group and go deep with them instead of having so many offers. So mm -hmm. if you just have to get some clarity, I appreciate that. And I love that you're inviting your inner circle into this sort of apprenticeship opportunity where they can take some steps that they may not have taken before as business leaders and see how it works for them in a safe place, right? I don't think we need to have um, more of these sort of like surface level things that are happening out there. We have a huge community of people that want to go deeper and we need leaders ready to step into that role. 
to help them to really understand what is this for me? What is business for me? And how do I take it to the next level? So you're doing that by inviting them in. Awesome. Thank you. Great question. Yeah, I've definitely had the experience of being at three-day events where there are multiple speakers making multiple offers, but the intention of the event is clearly for the main person to then offer their program, and it has just felt like a lot, like I'm being slapped in the face by offers. Uh, if I was one of your clients, I would gladly pay more to step onto your stage and maybe make a free offer that is in support of something that you're teaching, like maybe one of your bulleted points is community. And so I'm going to offer some free giveaway uh, around whatever the something around community that's like supporting your thing. It's not detracting and they would get it later. They would receive that free gift later uh, or nothing or not make any offer for the chance to be critiqued. Uh, afterwards. So I just want to tell you one of my mentors years ago said, Jessica, people will pay more to speak. You don't have to pay people to speak or give them discounts or anything like that. Like people will, they want to be on stage. They want to get the feedback and the reflection and the experience. So I don't know if that's helpful at all, but I just want to speak to that. Right. It looks like Khadija has a question. So I just saw her wave her hand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Audra, um, for all your wisdom. I, well, this question is for both of you. So um, I still have a, a meetup that's growing and gaining some momentum, and I'm using it to fill my coaching practice. And so I actually have an event in March, and I, I'm completely new to the collaboration thing. So my last event, I actually did have a woman um, offer some movement but I didn't add that in my promotion for that event. And this coming workshop, I have someone doing a meditation and I haven't even talked to her about promoting the event. So um, I'm playing with the idea of having guest speakers. So I, I'm putting it out there as like, what suggestions do you have in terms of, you know, me continuing to grow my meetup and at this stage, how do I work with collaboration? Great. So what I wanted to mention this earlier, so I'm glad you asked this and it sparked it again, um, is that whole engagement process that's pre-event for our participants, we need to have that process for our staff, our volunteers, our guest speakers, um, right? So this person that's leading the meditation, we want to engage that person before so that they're really hired up to be there with us right mm -hmm. not like oh oh yeah I have that thing this weekend I gotta show up at noon right it's like no I'm ready I already know some of the people that are gonna be there um, maybe I've you know given some things to the community just to be a service um, so that might be a person that you do like a Facebook live with and say you know hey we're gathering in March and we're getting really excited um, mm -hmm. and here's why Right. And, and a genuine conversation, like I okay. said, not the scripted five things that you can get from the meditation I'm going to offer, but like, who am I? Why would people want to meet me? Um, really getting to know each other. Um, so that getting to know you process happens just like as if we were dating someone, right? Like, oh, we've seen them, we're meeting them, we're talking to them. Um, so that happens for your speakers too. And if you can engage them in that process and then give them like, here are the 10 steps I would love for you to take. If you're going to be a part of my event and be on my stage, you're a leader and you need to be in that leadership role. You mm -hmm. don't get to just show up and speak for your 30 minutes. You have to be engaged. That's part of this community. It's part of our philosophy. It's part of our mission. Um, and then how do you build that in? You do it creatively and uniquely in your business model, um, but give them some steps, right? Like we're gonna do a Facebook Live. I'd love for you to send this out to your community on email three times. Here are the dates I suggest. Here's some copy, right? Like the best partners that I have been able to participate with are ones that make it really clear and easy, but also give me the room to be fully expressed as myself. Right. So here's some suggested copy. Take it and make it your own 
and sort of build that collaboration in each of these steps mm -hmm. um, so that, it, you know, some people would disagree with what I just said because their branding is so like tailored and it has to be like this. Um, but I think as we're more and more collaborative, we want to bring multiple diverse voices in. And so allowing them to have some of that expression in your copy. Um, and maybe that's something you want to check off on or you want to read it before they send it out. Um, but, you know, ask them to be engaged as who they are. Um, and then the other thing I was thinking about um, in terms of this ecosystem is I actually work with clients to, to draw that out and create it. And that can be in just a small little drawing exercise or it could be like, you know, creating a wall in your office where you actually build your ecosystem out in a creative way. Um, so when you're looking at here's my event and I want to shift it in this degree. Okay, so what's, what are all the other things that are going to shift around it? right? So take a whiteboard and actually draw it out. If I do these things, these things might happen. If I change it and do this, these things might happen. If I engage this person in this way, then here's the anticipated outcome, right? So start to look at like, where are your rivers going to flow? Where are your mountains going to build? Where are the like gardens going to be able to be most nourished in your business ecosystem? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I want to go into some more questions, but I also wanted to know if there's anything that you wanted to share. I know we shared your website, but anything that you wanted to share with the women around how they can connect with you more, um, and then we can open it up for some more questions. Yes, great. Um, yeah, I have my website. I have a free gift on there. Um, the gift is probably not at the level that you all are at in your business. Um, I often, I will also work with people who are just getting started and getting clients. Um, and so what I would really invite you into is a deeper conversation and a relationship where we get to know each other. So I have sent all of you a Facebook request if we weren't already friends. And I would say, let's talk, let's have a conversation, let's have a chat. Um, and that could look a lot of different ways. Um, it might be, you know, I want to have a conversation about doing business together. It might be a question about your particular event. I'm really open to it being um, an organic way that we might create a relationship. Um, and it's, I'm doing this in a new way. I'm, I'm throwing off all that old, here's the consultation and it's free and it's going to look like this and here's the title because um, I'm just not in that space in my business. And so I truly want to get to know you if you want to get to know me and if there's something that we can birth together and be partners within, um, I'm really open to that conversation. And I do um, do production for a select few clients um, and what that looks like is I come in and be your person at your event. And the way that I like to do that is in a deeper partnership where we're actually building in some way your business ecosystem together. And I'm participating in that force that's moving forward. And that does not have a prescription. So if you're interested in that type of conversation, then we should just start talking and getting to know one another. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for such a beautiful invitation. Um, I think what I'll do, Audra, is I will add you. Um, we have a Facebook group uh, that you, I may have already added you. That's just for women who've spoken at Fem Talks and who are part of, who have, uh, are or have been a part of the uh, speaker inner circle. Um, and I'll add you. It's a really rich um so oh here we go okay great i'll go ahead and add you to that group since technically you're speaking at one of our, our training calls um but that way you can also be more connected to the women in this community it's a very active group and just a wonderful place where women do say hey ladies i need your two cents do you like this should i do this um so it's a great place for you to also just have a voice and answer women's questions about events and and now she's now Audra is really easy to find because she's a member. You can just go into the members and <laughs> search for her and Facebook message her and yeah, stay connected long term. So thank you, Audra. Awesome. awesome. Um, I put the uh, her website here in the chat box again for you ladies. So you can click on that. Um, let's open it up for uh, 
Uh, let's open up for a couple more questions. We're slated to go until 12.15. You can always pop off whenever you need to, but I think we have time for another couple of questions. I have a question, Jessica um, and Audra. Um, I, I've been studying as of lately um, different uh, groups and communities um, and uh, also uh, having done that, also looking at types of communities that um, use a sort of an older business model, shall we say, or shall we call it evangelism? So because I'm looking at um, communities, I've also ended up looking at cults. <laughs> and then um, my question is how, you know, there's these giant movements and, you know, today is the, 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 I guess, Billy Graham died today. And we know like what a huge speaker he was and how he gathered all these people around this idea of Christianity. And I know I've, it's been very curious to me is how we can have that kind of impact on our, on our, um, the sacred feminine um, divine community that we're trying to create that is not that more evangelical model and it's not the sort of Amway Avon Tupperware model. I mean, we're not doing, like you said, the, those silos, but the web. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess I want to know a little bit more about do we have to use those older, more masculine constructs to really make our message get out there or really, what does the web look like as we're making it? I, I don't know if that explains my question, but I'm hoping it does. <laughs> yes. So I want to just be clear. Were you asking Jessica or me? Or you, Audra, yeah. Um, so it's an awesome, beautiful, like such a rich question. Um, and I think to truly answer that question, we need to be in dialogue with each other as visionary women, as feminists. And so, I mean, I see in the future that we are in circle, in person, like having that conversation in a deeper way. And I don't know what that looks like or when it comes to be, but this web, if it's truly a web, has to have all the voices within it. And for that to take place, it can't be the lone wolf scenario. It can't be just one person that's speaking and creating the vision. It has to be all of us, right? So, um, and you do real estate, right? Where you help people build collective communities. Mm -hmm. um, so I think in some way you're already starting to do that, right? You're already in that conversation. Um, and I wonder how we can create as a community um, some consistency with that conversation. And that's something that I'm actually looking at in my, my dissertation. Um, so more to come on that because I'm going to actually interview women and ask them, you know, how have you been feminist? How have you been um, putting eco-psychological principles into your business? How are you creating this web already? And then where are the gaps that exist so we can do this even better? Right. And so I think to some degree, it depends on the community we're speaking to, whether or not we need to use those old masculine ways. And more so, I think we might have to sort of couch it in a language that speaks to the person we're trying to reach. Right. That's the principle we need to use in branding as well. Like, who are we reaching out to and What's, what are they, what are the words they already use? Because then it will resonate with them. And then once the relationship is created, we can open the conversation to a bigger level, right? Um, and that we can use their language to initiate the conversation, but we don't have to use the old mechanistic masculine way of being in that conversation. And so through the ways that we model, the ways that we show up, the ways that we live from moment to moment and how we are present in that space is what's going to create more dramatic change over time. And so part of that is, is the feminine wisdom of trust that something deeper is going on. It's already in process that we don't have to do it all in this moment and that we can let go of an attachment to how it's supposed to be, right? Because an attachment of how it's supposed to be is based on expectation. That's a masculine way of doing it, right? That if I do X 
and I add y, it's going to equal z. Well, that's not how it's always created in the natural organic world, right? So if we want to step into that vision, we have to be willing to do it in a different way. Um, so I kind of answered the question without answering it because I don't think we have the whole answer yet. But I think the key is that we come back into dialogue with each other over and over. Um, and so some of those conversations are happening, um, like at Bioneers and, you know, for certain communities, Wisdom 2.0 is the place where that conversation is happening for corporate folk um, and lots of other, you know, amazing organizations, IONS, that's right here in the North Bay, Institute of Noetic Sciences, Earthrise Retreat Center, um, and lots more I can, I can offer if anybody has a specific need. Thank you so much for, for addressing that. It's just a conversation I really want to start because I just, you know, I, I see the power of, um, you know, that sort of masculine model. And, and while we do want to move forward with our, um, you know, the sacred feminine spirit kind of rising from, from underneath, you know, um, I, I just hesitate to use those masculine ways and I'm really wanting to find um find the model that may have been lost you know yeah. what was you know and i was just drawing on my paper here as as you answered and i was really kind of thinking about you know sacred geometry you know how things start from a point in the middle a single but to create that that you know that growing circle it's always adding more points around that so that's really that group that you're talking about and that group creates a larger group. And I, I do see that rather than it being this sort of linear, I'm the leader, you're the follower, but that um, I'm, I'm creating this group. And I just think it's so important, you know, that Jessica really encourages us to do that around our speaking events, because I, I really see now the power in that. Um, so thank you for that. And that um, makes me really um, anxious to get my, my production crew together now. So, <laughs> Yeah, and, and one of the things you're doing really well by bringing people together in collectives where they can live and work together um, is you're creating that environment where that circle of dialogue can happen, right? Like Native and Indigenous communities made decisions in a circle around a fire where people were together in relationship and community having conversation. And that's a localized way of being in life versus a globalized way of being in life. So, you know, I love the example of um, Dancing Rabbit Eco Village that's out like in the Midwest. Um, what they did was create their eco village and then they started branching out and bringing that conversation to other people and inviting people back in to say, hey, come look at our model and how this is working mm -hmm. and see what you can apply in your localized community situation. Right. Yeah. Learning from others. Right. Thank you. Such rich conversation. Thank you. I told you that I always feel better when I, at the end of these calls than I do at the beginning, I always just feel so much more connected to my lineage and ancient wisdom. And just, I just love what comes through in my time with you women. It's just wonderful. So um, we, I want to honor our, our time, and um, so we are going to complete, but um, yeah, just thank you from the bottom of my heart, a reminder to uh, all of you, to uh, I think everyone on the call right now, um, you know, you're, you're part of the, the mastermind, and we come together almost every single week, live, and occasionally online like this to, to mastermind, to literally sit around the fire with our, our candles and do live candlelight masterminding. So stay connected. Let's stay in these conversations. Um, allow this conversation to stir up. Uh, like you're going to kind of dream on this and think on this and come into answers and come into more questions. So I want to keep this conversation about filling and creating visionary events alive. And when you have a question, Facebook message Audra um, or bring it to the mastermind or bring it to an upcoming luncheon and let, let's keep this conversation alive. Um, so yay, more please. Um, so much love for all of you. Uh, we're going to complete. And uh, Audrey, I'd love to just give you the last you know, few seconds here to just give any final thoughts before I turn the record off and stop our meeting. 
Well, I just want to thank you all for um, really inviting me and then embracing me in your community. Um, I also loved the dialogue today. That's the part that really juices me up, not when I'm just speaking at people. Um, and so I really appreciate your questions and that this is a community that's going deep together. That's a really important thing for this time. Um, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm, thank you. So much love. So much love. <laughs>